everybody, it's Glenn, back in this video with the Marvel Legends Avengers box set. This side of the pond we like nothing better than bitching and whining about how hard it is to get our grubby little hands on Marvel Legends. So good news is we're finally getting an exclusive of our own in the form of this European Disney Store exclusive set. The bad news is we're getting an exclusive of our own in the form of this European Disney Store exclusive set. And I say bad news is it features a number of blasts from Marvel Legends past, yet now I have it in front of me I confess I'm kind of excited, or just plain seduced by the bright and shiny plastic. Somewhere on here I saw the price tag, yep there it is on the bottom there, and stop rubbing your eyes as you are seeing correctly it's a whopping £99.95 in good old blighty, and on the continent will set you back £149.90 in euros. Oof, that's me not buying groceries this this week. Mech, who needs food? Oh. On this side of the packaging we get art featuring the four Avengers in the set, and on the opposing side I expected a picture of Ultron laughing <laughs> only more robot-y, so <laughs> But no, it's just the same picture repeated from the other side. Then on the reverse of the box, a picture of all the figures, but let's crack the set open as the way the Avengers are posed here, they're clearly itching to beat the snot out of Ultron. So here they are, all out of packaging. This video will be a one-stop shop review of them all, so put on the kettle, make a cup of tea, and sit back and get comfortable. We'll kick off going right of the screen to the left, so beginning with Captain America! Of all in this set, he represents the least we have to track back down memory lane as this is Marvel Now Cap from the Mandroid Bath Wave that accompanied the Captain America Winter Soldier movie of last year. Of course, Marvel Now was the rebranding across Marvel comic books in 2012 with the look of this figure in keeping with that rebranding. I never owned the previous version to compare it with, so if you have it and spot any differences, let us know in the comments beneath this video. The first Captain America movie was released in 2011 and with the Marvel Now relaunch in the following year you can certainly see the influence of the movie with this looking very much like the MCU costume filtered back through a comic book lens. Very limited deco with no dry brushing or shading, making the bright flat plastic look a little mighty battler looking. Nice honeycomb texture sculpted in relief on the upper torso. Mmm, I said honeycomb and now I want a crunchy. The face sculpt is stern, his left eye wandering a little and has a discoloured speck on the nose. And of course, Cap comes with his shield. It's as brightly red, white and blue as the plastic of the figure itself. It can be clipped onto the wrist or the shield can be plugged into his back for when Cap needs both hands free to strangle the Red Skull. Now looking at his articulation, his head rotates side to side. He's able to bury his chin into his chest and also looks up a decent amount. At the shoulder, his arm rotates and moves up to not quite a right angle to his body. There's upper arm rotation, then a double jointed elbow, then at the wrist his hands rotate and they're hinged moving down and also up. He has waist rotation, then also an ab crunch which moves this far forward and limbos a decent amount back. At the hips his legs move out to the side this much, they move forward much more, and then move slightly back. There's upper leg rotation, followed by a double jointed knee, rotation at the top of the boot there, then at the ankle his feet are hinged moving backwards and forwards, and he has that crazy ankle rocker pivot that I love. Then next up, tis I, the mighty four. And here's a big and two standing just a shade under the Hulk in the set. The modern look this figure has is based on a redesign of the character by Oliver Koipel in the comic from 2007. And it translates from page to plastic really well, looking like he stepped straight out of the comic art. The heavy deco on the chainmail certainly makes it pop. His cape is pretty majestic looking. It's not just smooth and has a texture to the surface that makes it look more like textile fibers and not just plastic. Also some nice shading to the creases of it to accentuate the sculpt. This one began life with it heralding the return of Marvel Legends as the 2011 SDCC exclusive. Coming in fancy hammer packaging, then it reappeared with a modified deco in the Terax bath wave, or it might be more recently recognisable to you from the Thanos wave earlier this year. That one was based on the later Marvel Now 2012 redesign of the character that really 
really it was less of a redesign and more of just a tweak. As such, the figures share many of the same parts, albeit with the Marvel Now version being all suns out, guns out. Plus, I like the more muted tone to that one's cape. And of course, he comes with the mighty Mujin. The head of it has some nice sculpt and deco that makes it seem more like an artifact of antiquity. And while no deco on the handle, it does have some nice sculpting to it. It fits snugly enough into his hand. As for posing, it's really quite limited. So the head rotates side to side, but there is no neck hinge. It's just on a ball joint, so no up and down movement of the head. And then the flow of the cape over the shoulder does inhibit some of the arm movement. It moves up this far, there's upper arm rotation, then rotation again at the elbow. And this is hinged to move to not quite a right angle to the upper arm. There's rotation at the wrist, and this is also hinge moving down and up. There is no waist rotation, but it does, in lieu of that, have a rotating diaphragm joint, which then moves a little forward, and then, well, not really back. And then this loop on his belt is hinged, if you want to stick his hammer in there. For the hips, his legs move out to the side this much. They move this far forward, a bit inhibited by his skirt there. The leg doesn't seem to move back any. There's upper leg rotation, and then an ugly double-jointed knee. And then at the ankle, his foot rotates, and it hinges backwards and forwards, but no. No ankle rocker pivot. Now moving on to Ultron. There are no strings on me. He sticks with the trend of this set trotting out old action figures. But here, way more than the previous two, we get much more of a marked distinction in the deco. It's kind of a shame that Ultron, as one of the Marvel Universe's significant villains, hasn't received a big budget purpose made sculpt, because if not in the year of of Avengers Age of Ultron, then likely never. Just grabbing a vaguely robot looking body and sticking an Ultron head on it is a bit of a slap in the face of the character. It also follows hot on the heels of the Ultron from the Target set I recently reviewed, which received the same treatment. That was the Spider-Man Infinite Series Ultimate Green Goblin Bath Wave Ultimate Beetle turned Ultron. This one in this set is Titanium Man turned Ultron. First becoming Ultron in the Ironmonger Bath Wave that accompanied the last Iron Man movie, then two years back became Gold Ultron as a Marvel Digital Comics Unlimited Plus exclusive. So yes, sharing the same mold, but I feel a step above. The metallic sheen to the plastic, I think, is much superior to the previous release, giving it more of a die-cast appearance, whereas the earlier one simply looks like silver plastic. Beyond that, taking a closer look, and the newer one has some more detailed deco with the outlining in black of the red eyes. With that black line work, extending from the peak of the eye over the top of the head. Then in the mouth, the older one was disappointingly rendered with a flat red paint. The new one renders the detail of that Kirby crackle that is a visual signature of the character in the comic art. Ultimately, still not the Ultron figure Ultron deserves, but the previous version left room for improvement, which Hasbro have capitalized on here. Now looking at articulation and his head rotates side to side, he's able to look down quite a fair amount. He's able to look up a real decent amount though. Those shoulder armor pieces are hinged so they don't inhibit the shoulder articulation as much as you might think. There's upper arm rotation, then a double jointed elbow, then at the wrist the hands rotate and they're hinged to move down and up has waist rotation, and then an ab crunch, which moves this far forward, and then moves about the same amount back. At the hips, the legs move out to the side, not too far, and he has those awful hip joints where you need to finagle and twist them to get the leg to move forward and also back. There's upper leg rotation, and then a double jointed knee, and then at the ankles, the feet rotate and they're hinged, moving backwards and forwards. And again, no ankle rocker pivot. And now, walk no like puny toy. This is essentially the same as the one that came as a Toys R Us exclusive two pack with Valkyrie back in 2010. Then Valkyrie was a fan vote winner, just as Angela won a vote this summer. Hmm, next time Hasbro hold a vote, I'm gonna want to see independent judication. It's often referred to as the Ed 
Nick McGuinness Hulk after the artist who drew the relaunched Hulk series in 2008. Has some nice shading to both the torn trousers and skin that accentuates the muscularity of the sculpt, but that sculpt to me is problematic when a sculpt adheres to a particular artist's style, especially when that style itself is quite stylized. The end result is a figure that stands out like a bit of a sore thumb, not really stylistically blending in with other legends. Before he was paired with Valkyrie, this Hulk began life with a different head sculpt as the Red Hulk Bath from the 2008 Target exclusive series. In fact, the Red Hulk was first introduced in that same series that Ed McGuinness drew. The stylized, almost cartoony style of it is probably best illustrated in comparison side by side with Toy Biz's Face Off 2 pack Hulk. That's my default Hulk, has really amazing texture work going on in the sculpt in both the rendering of the trousers, then with the skin you can almost see the pores in the skin. Whereas the Hulk from this set has been at the oil of Olay, his, his skin is perfectly smooth. In the plus column, he does have clenched fists, which I think every Hulk should have. I mean, sure, I know he does that weird mega clap thing, but come on, Hulk smash! Plus, I'd take this one over the one that came with the Beetle Ultron in the Target set I recently reviewed. Taking a closer look and some details I do like, the toenails and fingernails, well, thumbnail as you can't see the fingernails, what with his clenched fists. They're painted, which is some nice variety. Then a curious detail, his trousers are unbuttoned. He's like me after eating a big meal, unbuttoning so I can breathe. Looking at his articulation and his head rotates side to side, there is no neck hinge, it's just a ball joint, but there is a little bit of wiggle up and down of the head. At the shoulder, the arms rotate and they move up this far. There's upper arm rotation, then a single jointed elbow, but you're not getting much of a range of motion out of it. At the wrist, the hands rotate and they're hinged moving down and up has waist rotation and then an ab crunch which moves a decent amount forward and then well doesn't really move back at the hips the legs move out to the side this much and then they move forward. You've got to finagle that ball jointed hip and then take advantage of the upper leg rotation to move the leg forward. And then, well, it doesn't really move too far back. There's a single jointed knee. And then at the ankles, the feet rotate and they're hinge moving well. They're stiff back and forwards and no ankle rocker pivot. What are you doing to me, Hasbro? Finally, Iron Man. Bookend in this video with brightness because as brightly red, white, and blue as Cap was, this Iron Man is as brightly red and yellow. I like it. Makes me smile just looking at it. Maybe it's because the yellow is like a ray of sunshine warming my life. Close inspection and there is a bit of discrepancy between the parts that are yellow plastic and red plastic painted yellow. And again between the parts that are red plastic and the yellow plastic parts painted red. Like Ultron, this is a twigged redeco of an Iron Monger Bath series figure, that being the Heroic Age Iron Man. Heroic Age being Marvel Comics rebranding in 2010. That original Heroic Age Iron Man in deco is likely more real world looking with a gold instead of yellow. And in some weird way I consider this newer redeco as the Saturday morning cartoon variant. Just got that vibe about it. Taking a closer look in the faceplate is where the colour mismatch is most noticeable. It is a red plastic head with that face plate painted yellow and the coverage is not the best leaving it looking quite pastel and I never liked this head sculpt. In contrast to bright colours there's something sad clownish looking about it. It's sort of a slight frown and those two lines that extend vertically down from each of his eyes are like the tracks of his tears. But worry thee not if you don't like that head it comes with a bonus interchangeable unhelmeted head. Well I say bonus but for a hundred squid cap could have come with an interchangeable head at least two. Mine has got a couple of small scuffy marks. And is it just me or is it a bit Ben Affleck looking in the likeness? Seems many are eager to get their hands on this head though. For customising and those who want to take Tony from battle to the boardroom, it may disappoint a little. As so it doesn't look like a pinhead, it's scaled to this armoured body. It's a super tight fit on this chameleon suited body, but once wrestled on it is a bit oversized on there. I guess it's not too bad. What do you think? 
technique. Looking at the articulation and the head rotates side to side, it looks down quite a decent amount, but doesn't look up as far at the shoulder. The arm rotates and it moves up this far. There's upper arm rotation, then a double jointed elbow. Then at the wrist, the hand rotates and it's also hinged moving down and up. There's waist rotation and then an ab crunch which moves this far forward and limbos much more back. At the hips the legs move out to the side this far, moves this far forward and only the tiniest bit back. There's upper leg rotation, a double jointed knee and then at the ankle the foot's hinge moving backwards and forwards and yay the ankle rocker pivot that I love is back. And pose like this at his widest stance possible, still with both feet flat on the floor, is just why I love this ankle rocker pivot. I mean, sure, this pose would bring no end of tears to Tony's eyes, but in terms of action figure engineering, it's really quite astounding. So at near £100, you're paying essentially the price for each in the set as you are for single pack legends. Fortunately, I had a 20% off discount code that I used. That psychologically made me feel like I was getting a bar Bargain, but I think £80 is actually a more realistic value to this set. I just wish we had got the Book of the Fashanti set as the European exclusive and SDCC got this. But that's speaking from someone who has been around the toy block a time or two, collecting well before the first outing of each figure from this set. Before we get on our high horses though, I think it's important to remember for legends to live on and further still grow, new collectors have to climb on board. Some people might not have been collecting when these figures first came around and might relish the chance to go back and conveniently swoop them all up in one set. To that end, I think this set could be a good entry point for a new or especially a young collector. As someone new to Legends, it's got a handful of Marvel's preeminent characters most will be familiar with from the movies, and I can't resent something that could be somebody's first step onto the path of action figure collecting. Anyway, for my review of the Rhino Baff and account down of that entire wave, click the video on the right. And if you've stuck with me through till this point, you truly have a superhuman attention span, and I hope to see you in my next video. Mm, bye.